Uh, so, uh, the first ones I wanted to start out with were from a calculator company that if you know what they made calculators at all, you probably are thinking of desktop printing commercial calculators. And these are a brother and sister. They are Royal <coughs> brand. And they do both work. Every one of these works, by the way. Um, every time I move, it redoes it. <laughs> so, uh, this one, the 94F here, is a business model that has a very strange approach in that you, it's, it's kind of like the TI BA2 Plus, where you have to, com probably needs a light. Uh, the light source, I bet, is what's probably it. But you have to enter values using a two-step process, and then you compute the one you want. So it's a BA2 Plus kind of approach to it. The scientific here on the other side, which keeps drifting out of focus, had to have been owned by a mathematician. The reason is because, if you look, the worn spot is not at the on-off switch, but it's the degree radian switch. <laughs> and it appears that it's because somebody was pushing it over to the radian side all the time. So somebody must have been borrowing this thing and doing degrees calculations, but the mathematician who owned it said, it's out, of, it's out of radiance mode again, and kept pushing it over. From where? I'm sorry. Ah. That'll help. Maybe it'll help. So, and in order to test these, most of us have some quick calculation we do just to make sure, oh, it's, it's working all right. I always, for some reason, I don't know why, compute the sine of 25 degrees. Because I always remember it's 0 0.422. And so, how many digits did that return? It shows five, let's multiply it times 10. It actually computes to six. Wow. Eight digit machine, but did six digits. Very Over on the business one, I always compute my first house payment, but I won't bore you with that. <laughs> <laughs> just because I remember it. I'm are sorry? Are both red dots? They are both red dots, so that means if you want one, we'll talk business later. <laughs> uh, so Royal also had a unit that was a big brother of those, that had a lot more features and functions on it. Uh, a bigger one, this is similar in some ways to some other models, so it's probably a remade, rebadged one. But uh, it, it works as well, and gives the same six digits with the two extra zeros on the end. How nice of it. <laughs> Uh, where most of these came from is from uh, an eBay seller that you may have noticed if you do anything with it. His name is Scott Reynolds. Okay. If you're looking for an obscure calculator, he is the place to find them. Uh, so take a look. The next one, number four here, is a Qualitron. Ooh, okay. And good one. Uh, I don't, some of them I don't know a whole lot about. The Royals probably date to 1975, is my guess. There you go. Yeah. Move it a little to the left so it lights up a little better. I don't know if that'll do much, but. Wow, that, 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 this must be family. This, this so, family. nice bright green display and uh, does work. This one has nice click action on the keys. Hey Gene, is that mic, is that mic turned on? I'm, I'm getting nothing. Oh. Are you on plug or something? Oh, look at that. Let's we'll see if we can leave it here. You getting it now? Can you hear me now? I can. All right. So, uh, again, a Qualitron, a uh, degrees rating switch, nice click action on the keys, and it does, in fact, compute the sign of 25 correctly to the same six digits. Might have the same processor inside them. It is a big brother to this one. What are the batteries in all of these? I'm sorry? Batteries. Yes. Uh, some of them are rechargeable. Most of them are triple A's or double A's. This guy's a nice red display. And you can see it has yellow shift functions. It will do, whoops, it will do uh, the gamma function, wow. permutations and combinations, and binomial distribution. Sweet. All on a little uh, machine like this. And of course, it does in fact compute the sign of 25. Finally, more digits. <coughs> Finally, more digits. <coughs> I love the, the Qualitrons have beautiful uh, design. They really do. Beautiful ergonomic industrial design and I really like that. I've taken some of these into work uh, and shown them to them and some of them like, oh, what's that ugly thing? But these have always gotten a very good response. It seemed like it took longer to compute that on that, that version. Oh, it might have. Oh, I've been meaning to pass these around. Would you guys like to punch on them if I pass them around? Oh, yeah, sure. Are you going uh, to tune me out if I pass them around? <laughs> yes. Somebody says, what, you're talking? So there you go. Uh, the next one is 
a real jewel. It's a Lloyd's that you used to see on the back of magazines comparing it to the TI SR50 or SR51. And this one is in fact new in the box. Ooh. It does work. Well, there you go. It does work, but you can't really see it here. There's a film over the display that has never been taken off. I've never had the case out or the charger, but it's just incredible and it does work for the sign of 25 degrees with uh, six digits. So it's just amazing to me that somebody could have this thing from 1975 and it's still in the box. It's uh, the charger is an AC adapter, so I, it has batteries in it. I have taken the calculator out, just not opened it up. This is the big brother of that Lloyd's that finally got a real function because it has hyperbolics right there. Uh, in my collection of non-HP, non-TIs, I don't collect the crazy four bangers or ones that have reciprocals. I have a minimum cutoff point that at least needs to be able to tell me the height of a telephone pole given the angle and the distance, you know, the height of this, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it needs trig. <laughs> height of a pole given the uh, angle to the sun and the length of the shadow, right? And, that. and it does the sign of 25 degrees. Somewhere on <laughs> here is a button that'll give me more decimal places, but that's not really the point. It has some uh, shift functions. It almost, it looks very spacey, very much space age, kind of like late <clears throat> 70s, you know, with this kind of a display. Um, I stored in there, so this one will get passed around. Next for a Sinclair. This Sinclair is the uh, Oxford Scientific. Uh, it's, it's really uh, pretty. It's got nice, good response on the keys. Uh, it computes the sign of 25, rounds it a bit. But very, very nice. Um, I think change number, I don't know, what is that? I don't remember what that is, CHN, but. Maybe since it's a British calculator, a lot it could tell us at some point. But very nice, very nice. Sinclair made some very good machines, and so I, I like this. This one, however, is really sweet. It is the Sinclair President, President Scientific with a huge blue cover on the display. The keys here, though, have no tactile feedback at all. Uh, and uh, it does have pi, it does the sign of 25, so this may be a, have been a precursor to the Voyager series, right? Whoops, sign of 255, brother. So it returns that. I really like that one. You see the non-scientific version of this one in this entire area, the keyboard over here is typically uh, empty, uh, but uh, the, this is a very, very hard one to find here, this uh, President Scientific. Mm -hmm. Try the CHN on that, there's a larger one this Changes the number. It's as if it's into scientific or out of scientific, maybe. Uh, why is that so important? I'm, I'm really not sure. Maybe if you have a scientific result, you want to try to show it without all the crazy stuff on the end of it. So thank you. <coughs> what number was that? That was nine, wasn't it? I had to number these to try to get them. What's on the back? Number nine. All right, number ten. Interesting little guy here. A uh, oh, yeah. Rodolphin, right? And this one, I like this one because of the, the industrial design. I mean, it's a very nice, sleek, aluminum finish, finish to it. Uh, I think it looks really sharp. Uh, the keys have very good contrast. I mean, look at those nice, bright, white, shifted functions on there. And uh, you've got, again, the green display. It has tactile feedback. Takes a little while to compute that sign. Did you see that thing flashing? Watch it again. And you'll see that on several of these models. So there were several chipsets that were used in them, I suppose. But uh, I like that Rodolphin. All right, here is a Unitrex that I like because of the very colorful buttons. One of my favorite brands growing up is the first one I really was exposed to, which was Unisonic. They were all silver, had the green covered display, and they had bright blue, orange, and, and white buttons. And so this one reminds me of one of those. Being a Unitrex, it's probably related to it. But this one had uh, si uh, trig functions on it, inverse trig, degrees, radians, and so it, it just looks really sweet. 
25, and it'll do the sign of 25 again as well. Same six digits. So it's probably using again that same display, the Unitrex SC30. This one, some of more of you may have seen before. This is another Unitrex. What's different about that one? A couple of things different. It's RPN. It's got an enter button right up here where Tim's wanting to put it one of these days. Top right corner. There's also some other fundamental difference that I had never seen in a calculator before. See if you can spot it up there. Not the red display, which just went dim. My battery's going dead or what? No, it's just a timeout. All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tell you because I don't want to take up too much time. But look at the trig functions on the unit. Backwards? Oh, Cosine, sine, 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 tangent. I think I have never seen it anywhere else, I don't think, that didn't go sine, cosine, tangent. But this yeah. one has it has it backwards. It has, designer, I'm sorry. I, I don't know, but it has a three-level high stack with no uh, drop-down or things like that, but it is RPN. This one suffers from terrible key bounds. It's probably the National Semiconductor Chips. Mm -hmm. Two BOMARs. This is uh, scientific. I think this is the MX100. The display is tilted. It's in there. Nice LED. Good uh, tactile feedback. It computes the same six digits there of the sign of 25 degrees. CS for a change sign button. All right. So a nice, good, nice brown uh, Bomar. Uh, incidentally, I found a second variation of this where the keys are all white instead of brown. I have no idea why you would bother do, tooling up a totally separate machine like that. The top of the line, Bomar, this is the MX140, in a nice patriotic of the U.S. at least fashion, I suppose. So that one has quite a lot of functions on it, quite a lot of functions. Interestingly, it has two uh, shift keys both labeled F, one white and one blue. <laughs> the blue is not a very well uh, chosen color. It's, it's more visible here on this, the display on the screen here than it is in real life. It's too dark. But if you key in 25 and then sign, once you figure out what you got to key in, you get a nice, what is that, eight, 10 digit result, something like that. The display segments here, the LED segments are very, very well defined too. Very, very tight little dots together. I really like this one. This one came in the box with the charger and everything else, the case, it looked like it had never been out of the case. The batteries have been replaced. Mm -hmm. All Scott right. does a good job uh, with the battery. Right? This is a monster. It won't even fit all the way in here. This is a Canon. Yeah. The Palmtronic F7. <clears throat> there we go. It, the entire lower half of the keyboard down here are metric conversions. Good way to waste a whole lot of space. Uh, if you look, this one, the trig is going vertical. Sine, cosine, tangent coming down. But you key in 25. That's really centimeters and stuff like that. It is. Wow. It's mile, kilometer, U.S. gallon, imperial gallon, liter. Uh, I don't, I don't know, kilogram, grams, ounces, pounds and ounces, foot and feet and inches, and all that stuff. Uh, S to STN, short ton, long ton. I don't know. What do you want to bet that that came out when the Carter administration was, <laughs> might have. Well, 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 was converting this to metric? Remember they were going to do that. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's this one does have, it adds a couple of things that some of these others have not had yet, such as polar to rectangular up here in the top, uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, back and forth to decimal degrees. Uh, strange key things. Uh, queer, I guess, CI, I don't, I don't know exactly. I still haven't figured out. That may be a swap right there, but no, it's really it's strange. For units. All right, good, good. I had no idea. I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, this one was, uh, you remember a couple of years ago, I gave a talk on contrast colors for keyboards. I wish I had had this one at the time. It's now one of my favorite you lost computers. Computer just went down. You lost your signal. No, just hit the. There you go. Uh, I wish I'd had this one at the time because. This is a Omron Scientific, and believe it or not, there are shift functions on that thing. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Where? Oh, okay. 
if you look, you can see them maybe a little bit, right? Above the seven is the sign function. That is not worn off. That's the way it came from the factory. Wow. It is just like in that talk, I had a black calculator with black keys with black letters written on them. This is it right here. And a black display that lights up black. It works nice, very nice. It takes another long time to compute that sign. So it's probably running again the same chipset. But it uh, has a nice handy uh, cord here for you to carry it with you stylishly as you go shopping. <laughs> stylishly. Stylishly. Here's one I think most of you have seen. Oh, yeah. I love this guy. RPN. RPN. What is it? The Omron 12SR right there. It has hyperbolics. Interesting choice of the shifted functions uh, accessed with the green key and green above and a strange clear key down there at the bottom. Has no tactile feedback, but has a whole lot of digits. Oh, wow. oh, 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 oh. I like that. Dancing here too. <laughs> you get uh, quite a few digits. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two. Twelve digit display on this puppy. So be sure to compute some transcendental functions with this guy and watch the display uh, fly around. I'd never heard of this brand before. Executron. It is, it's kind of big. It, wow. It was, there we go. It still works. Uh, nice clippy key action there. And factorial. It does have factorial. I mean, this thing clicks, you wake up somebody in the next room. <laughs> but you get the digits there showing up. The LED is a little darker than some of the others. There are a couple of variations of this one uh, that are out there, but uh, that one that one was really cute, I thought. Uh, this next calculator has one of the, to me, most appealing industrial designs of any of them. It makes me think of a, a sleek race car. I love the industrial design. It's a Sanyo, but it has some of the absolute most stupid design decisions anybody ever made on a calculator, period, no matter who it is. I will not hold back. Tell me if you can spot what I think the stupid design decisions are with this. First of all, they should have made the printing last on the on-off, but, but you can't read it, can you? It wore off. Well, you, go. you don't need to subtract, multiply, or divide very it, often, do you? Uh -huh. it, no, it's got plus, plus minus, uh, times no, divide here. No arc. All right, there are only five uh, scientific functions on the whole thing. There's pi, there's square root, Sine, cosine, tangent, that's it. Yeah, but we're... Yeah. There's no inverse trig. There's not even a square key or a reciprocal or anything else. Where's so you the put, multiply key, for example? Right there. Is that a shifted key? It is shift. You, you access the green shift with that yellow-red okay. shift key oh. over here. <laughs> oh, my God. The shifted functions are on the keys, the same color as the actual key. So, But if you overlook that, <laughs> it does compute my sine of 25 degrees. This one has sine, cosine, tangent vertically going the other direction. But when you look at this one, I mean, it's just, it's very sleek. It's very, it's, it's, it just, I love the, the design of it, other than these stupid decisions of putting the other things on. Industrial design is important. All right, as a nod to Felix and Gunther. Aristo. Aristo. Mm -hmm. This is the M75. Beautiful, beautiful machine. This one got Oz from the design people at Griffin. Uh, they really, really liked this one. Rounded edges. Ra it's rounded edges. That must be it. I mean, hello, hello. But I mean, this guy, this guy's very nice. There's no tactile feedback, but it's got a very bright display. Eight digits. It computes my test sine 25 right there. Except it uh, is not in degrees or something. People have been, it does have a little key bounce from time to time. There we go. So it did the sign of 25 degrees, but I, I love the color choices. They're not garish, but uh, they, they, this, this is a very classy machine. I'd always seen this and it never had one. It is almost like candy. It's a harvest calculator. <laughs> Sure. Farmers use it. Long and skinny. Have an exchange there? It did. The big brother of the M75, the M85. Mm. 
adds an extra row of keys and all sorts of additional functions on it. You've got uh, angle conversions down here. You've got uh, factorial and a few other things. This one, if you notice, on that Aristo here, it, the numbers come this direction as you enter them, and this one, it goes that way. So they go opposite directions. Why you would have changed it between those models, I don't know. 25 uh, sine comes up really strange. It always comes up that way, and I haven't figured out yet how to make it not show it that way. When you multiply by 10, you've got six digits. So all this fancy stuff, but six digits. But I, I really like the Aristos. Great German engineering right now. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, here you go. Richard's trying to tell me to quit. There's a privilege. Who makes privilege? Is it German as well? German, yeah. Uh, this one is different in some ways because it's the only one I've really ever seen that had dedicated primary keys for the inverse trig functions. Right here. Hmm. Sine, cosine, tangent, and not shifted, but special dedicated arc trig functions right there. Uh, again, lovely color choices. I mean, why have something boring as long as it's it's readable and everything else? Good, whoops, good feedback on the keys and sine of 25 degrees. You think that's the same uh, chipset, right, because of the flutter? But I love the privilege. That's an algebraic. This one. All right, these are 24. All right, this is 25. 25. All right, that goes 24. All right, here's another privilege. Break a leg. Break a leg. <clears throat> uh, I do apologize if I'm boring all of you to death. These are very nice. This one is very boxy, so it's almost like a Volvo. Right? It's very boxy, and it feels like it's mostly hollow. I mean, I don't think it's full of stuff, but what? type of calculator does this remind you of? Commodore, exactly. This has to be a rebadged Commodore. There's just no other way about it. And in fact, when you put it next to this guy, oops, it becomes very plain that that is nothing but a rebadged Commodore. They are identical. In fact, the rectangular keypad is the same dimension. So it's simply uh, put in a bigger uh, box. If you compute the sine of 25 on both of them, uh, they, they should all come up the same. No, they don't have numbers, we don't do it. Yeah, we still do. Um, this guy has a memory to me because when I was picking on a friend in high school, I broke this one. We took his calculator, we threw it somewhere, it busted. It wasn't in a Griffin case, I suppose. Uh, and his father had to take it back to Sears where he worked, and he came back with a much more advanced one. So I always remember this. I need to probably settle the karma and mail the guy one of these. This is another uh, Commodore. This one's a little bit more boring than the usual ones because they're all primary uh, key. Uh, all primary keys, you can see a good selection of scientifics, polar rectangular, some statistics added in, mean, and two different buttons for the two different types of standard deviation right here. A nice dedicated 10 to the X button, which often gets dropped, uh, X to the Y, and this one works just fine. There you go, a little slow on coming up with that. A little more advanced Commodore. There's actually one of these on eBay right now from uh, Georg uh, Werner. Uh, he's got one of these or did yesterday. Uh, nice bright display, but at an angle. So this one is very similar to that other one. It has dedicated keys for memories one and memory two. Yes. I don't, I don't understand that at all. Sign of 25 degrees comes up you know, just fine. Again, lovely red, white, and blue kind of keys. I've always liked the Commodores, which is why I have so many of them. This one is the, uh, what number is that guy? This is the 4190. The 4190. Commodore's really going upscale on this one in terms of functions. Look at that one. It's got uh, probability distributions, binomial, Poisson, it has an integral button that will do Simpsons integration, uh, permutations, combinations, uh, gamma function up here on the top corner. 
<clears throat> lots of really good stuff and the obligatory, as somebody pointed out, Carter administration metric conversions in the middle of it. Uh, the J informate fe uh, features over here, I believe, do some uh, rudimentary complex number calculations as well. Uh, Richard had asked a while ago for what was the first machine that could do complex numbers natively. The gut response a lot of people want to give is a 15C, that's wrong. TI had one before that, the TI-54 did complex numbers first, but because of key bounce, nobody ever got a right answer. <laughs> a few years before the TI-54, Commodore had already had complex number built into uh, their machines. That was the 4190. This is the grandpappy of all of those vertical machines that people really like to find. This is the 9190. It is essentially the same. They've moved around a few keys. I don't know why. They've made a couple of small changes, but if you look up here at the top, right above that one, that's not the gamma function anymore. It's the log of the gamma function. So somebody was thinking, you know, that's never going to be real useful, so it gives you a, a much greater range of, of things to try to do things with. Uh, it is a little bit boring, of course, in terms of the styling. It gives you a nice uh, display there, calculating uh, the uh, sine of 25 degrees. It is another red dot velocity, so get your checkbook out. I know most of you. That's right. I know most of you have seen these guys. Whoa! Whoa! This, this one shows up on eBay a lot, and people don't bid on it. So if you want one of these, just watch eBay for it. That is the N60. It has 60 keys. 60 keys. It is a navigation calculator. It does have uh, trig and science functions down in this lower quadrant. All sorts of distance, wind direction, wind speed, delta time, distance one, altitude, all, all this kind of stuff up in here. If Jeff Quickfall were here, it's all oh, it's so old fashioned. Uh, it does fairly well compute the sign again of 25 degrees. Look at that. Whoa. Whoops. A nice, uh, nice display. So again, if, if this, if you guys all went ooh for this one, keep an eye on eBay, and it's not a very expensive model. It's all big like this. Canadian dollars, right now. Buy How much? Thirty-nine. Buy it now. Canadian dollars, right Buy now. Buy it now. Buy it now. Yeah. You know, I mean, and again, melodic, another red dot. So I love this one. Again, it's it's very bulky. Uh, Thomas, this is one of them. Thomas, a couple of years ago or last year, got me an Olympic sales company catalog that had beautiful line drawings of many calculators from 1976 or 77, something like that. I remembered looking at it in the eighth grade instead of English. <laughs> and I remembered specifically these square models from Commodore, and I thought, oh, I'll never see this thing again. I had it. It got away from me. He had one and graciously gave it to me, so I scanned the whole thing into a PDF. I love these square ones. Y'all need to get with it. All right? The other of these big ones, Whoa. that is the statistics model. These were perhaps the most advanced pre-programmed calculators ever made. They have statistical stuff on here. I don't even know what they do. I mean, it's got several different forms of the normal distribution here, whether you're looking for a centered value or a value in the tail, chi-squared distribution, uh, binomial, it's got Poisson, it's got uh, all the basic scientific stuff down here. Slope and intercept, uh, all the different, uh, wow. I mean, all, you even have two groups of statistical data. You can switch back and forth between and then group two. It does the uh, sign of 25 degrees quite nicely. It's got a little bit of a problem with that display. I hear that's some kind of a thing behind the scenes, but uh, it works just fine, especially if I don't light that up. <laughs> Wherever the queer button is on that guy. There we go. Oh, now it's come on all the time. Oh, well. Extra zero, no extra charge. <laughs> This is one that Melodic has always wanted. This is the M55. That is the math-oriented model. And it has math functions like crazy. It's got uh, all sorts of, uh, I don't even know what a lot of this stuff is up there. Uh, numerical quadrature, it looks like. Um, random wow. numbers of all sorts. Vectors. I mean, I guess that's what that would be. U with a line over it minus V with a line over it. That's got to be something. I don't know what that is. But uh, really impressive thing, and this is this is the one that's the hardest to find. The navigation one, fairly easy. The stat one shows up pretty often on eBay. This guy never does. 
The last time one was on, it, it wasn't even noted, I don't think, in working condition. It went for nearly $500. Oh, God. Oh, God. And I was fortunate enough several years ago not only to get this one that works, but with the manual and original box. So I plan to retire one of these days. <laughs> uh, this one got skipped a little bit, but this is a lovely Santron. A nice, bright green display on this guy. I mean, it's very bright. It's relatively uh, you know, low on the feature set, but uh, if you notice, it has hyperbolics. That's one of the things I tend to look for. And it will compute uh, you know, the sign of 25 degrees just fine. Looks like a Commodore, but uh, Santron, rather thick. Rather thick for it. I mean, it almost looks like an SR-52 bomber. Maybe it has vacuum tubes. All right. This is the only LCD one I brought. It has a, where's the clear on this guy? It's got a yellow uh, LCD display, right? Yeah, okay. It is a national semiconductor. Why do I get this one? Because it has several variations of the normal distribution on it. Uh, the shift of the seven, you can't see it. The shift of the seven, the eight, and the nine are three different takes on the normal distribution. Uh, and so that, to me, qualified it as a little bit beyond the norm. Uh, so you can mess around with that one a little bit if you like. The holy grail for me was to find a Unisonic I remember having been in Kmart. When my mom went to do whatever shopping at Kmart, I went toward the camera counter and, oh, what are these calculator things? Does it still do one plus run, one right? Oh, great, how about two plus two? I'd waste my time doing all that. Unisonics were what were on the counter. I've always maintained there was a Unisonic that had the hyperbolic function on it. Everybody told me I was crazy. Guy Ball, who had a billion calculators. It doesn't exist. Nobody ever saw it. This is the Unisonic that had mm. hyperbolics. It is the only one I have ever seen. It was on eBay one night, newly listed. I jumped off the couch. My wife thought I was in, having a heart attack or something. <laughs> I bought it. Uh, why? Because it proved I was not imagining things from when I was a child. <laughs> it computes the sign of 25 degrees with an interesting kind of dot matrix uh, display right there. But that, I mean, it's just amazing. I've never seen another one of these. And I've been on eBay for 15 years. I do a lot of looking for calculators. I've never seen this one. It's the $14.99. You see a $10.99, you see a $12.99, a $7.99. Look out for the $14.99 because if you find it, you might make a few dollars. All right, this is the rarest thing I own because to my knowledge, there's only two of them. One of them, Georg uh, Werner has in his museum. Uh, I traded the other one of these to him. I found both of them on eBay. They were listed as TI graphing calculator. That's all it said. Nobody looks at those. I mean, you need another TI-83, but it had a preview next to it. I could just tell from the preview it was something TI had never sold. So I bought it. And it is this. It is their essential expander prototype. Oh, yeah. And there were two of them. It has very few keys. It's not a finished product. Come to find out, it was up in the Detroit area. They showed it to some teachers. Some teachers walked off with a couple of them. And they ended up at some kind of a thrift shop or something. And they were selling off, had no idea what it was. Uh, it still works. I don't have the battery pack. I traded that to give it to uh, 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 datamath.org. But some of the functions in it are not finished. When he took his pictures of it and put it on his website, he got a call within a few hours from the legal department at Texas Instruments. <laughs> they wanted to know where he had gotten it from. And he said, I got it from someone who bought it off eBay. Since that time, they've opened up that whole area to him of all of their um, you know, prototypes. Yeah, prototypes of expander-like uh, machines like this. And so uh, he, he's very happy. I'm very happy to have this one as well. But that one is a very interesting model. Those are a few of my favorite things. Uh, I want to encourage you to not just pass by the HPs or whatever on eBay. Go after some of them that are colorful uh, and, and interesting and, and rediscover some of that other history that's, that's passing away. We've got TI and HP pretty well covered, uh, but these other things I think are, are very interesting and cool too. That's it for me. Thank you.